How's everyone doing today? Um, I'm going to do a pretty quick, uh, I think, vid. Um, quick sometimes turns out to be a long thing. But um, on how to route your machine instance outputs to your Logic Pro X software. Um, I'll probably do one for Ableton at some point. Um, I've been saying I'm going to do them, but I um, haven't had the time. But I'll probably get around to doing that. So let's get right to it. Um, today, um, I pretty much fast forward everything. I have uh, Logic open here, as you can see. I've opened up an instrument track, and I've opened up a machine. Now, I want you guys to take a look at which version of the machine I opened up here, because I want to switch it. I did this with purpose. So I did a stereo one, not the multi-output, okay? But the reason why I did that is because you're able to switch between them back and forth without losing your work. So a lot of people get nervous. So I didn't start my initial programming in the multi-output version it doesn't matter you can switch after just to separate your outputs so let's get to it um, I have it open I'm gonna open up machine okay there we go and then what I did was pretty much just um, put a couple of tracks here 909 kit there some other I don't know what kick whatever just program some really fast corny stuff but um, just to for you guys to hear what's going on um, so let me go back into the mix mode right here Okay, and I'm going to move it over to the side. So now, actually, let's go back into 909 kit. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to go to mix mode. And you see, I have them closed down now, these groups. If I want to open them up, I double click on them. And I can actually see what's in that kit. I have a, all these parts. So let's see what's actually playing. Uh, my control, I'm going to mute some groups. I'm just going to do a basic old school house beat. Here it goes. So you can see I'm using like a kit, two toms on that one. Uh, let's do this one. A uh, snare, a clap, and a hi-hat, blah, blah, blah. So now we're going to move over to the, I'm going to turn the second one on. Okay. And let's take a look at that. Okay. And let's play it. I got like two vocals going on. And let's look at group C. That one, I just have one vocal making that noise on there. Cool. So I'm going to stop it. Now what I want to do is I'm going to do something really fast. I'm going to say, okay, I have three groups and I just want to send those three groups into Logic to maybe process them different. So I'm going to close this out here. But I want you guys to take a look at the master section here. So basically, this is like a mixer if you think about it. These are three channels on the mixer. Channel 1, 2, and 3. And those channels are being used by group A, group B, group C. And those guys are being routed to the master. The output of group A is being routed to the master. Output of group B, master. Group C, master. And the master output is being routed to external output 1. What is external output 1? So let's take a look at our door. Okay, I'm going to just move this guy out of the way for now. And we're going to open the mixer version of it, Command 2, for shortcuts, okay? And now if we take a look at this here, this is stereo output, right? So stereo output of that just means basically output 1 and 2 of my DAW, okay? That's all that is. That output is being routed to output 1 and 2 of my DAW, okay? But now I want to send these guys to separate, separate channels on my... LPX so I can process them further, right? So this is where this becomes an issue. Now I'm gonna say, I'm gonna play it first, right? Okay. I've programmed this stuff and I don't wanna lose it. Now I'm like, okay, now I wanna change my my instance to a multi-track output instance. So am I gonna lose my work? No, here we go. We're gonna change it from that to multi-output. Okay, machine shut down here, as you can see on my controller. Okay, it looks like there's something wrong with it. Okay, and now it's going to boot up again. And it's going to give me my machine back again, just in multi-output format. Okay, now if you can see this channel strip right here, change, it has a negative and a plus sign. Okay, which all it means since it's a multi-output instance now, I can assign different outputs to it. I'm going to hit the plus sign three times, right? Two, three. Because I have here three groups. Okay. And I'm going to quickly label this guy. I'm going to label it group A, just for this example. Okay. 
could be. There we go. Now up here, if we look at the input, because this is the input of logic, right? I'm going to make sure that instance number two or group output is going to be output three and four, right? Because I have an interface that supports a couple of outputs, but it doesn't really matter what interface you have, to be quite honest with you. It's just our inputs. This one will be output five and six, input five and six, and this one will be input seven and eight. Now in machine, what I'm going to do down here at the bottom, I'm going to assign this one to external number two, because external number one, remember, was the stereo track. So I need an external number two. Okay, this one will be external number three. This one will be external number four. And if we take a look at that, the master is external one. That's why I didn't choose external one for that one. Okay, because if I want to audition other stuff and continue to work, I still want to have a master track, which will be this one right here, which we should label master. And I can continue to audition and not worry about my other sounds. So let's play it. There you go. I'm going to mute this one. You see? B and C are no longer playing. Mute my drums. So that's pretty much the gist of it all, right? So now you're saying, okay, great. She did the, the groups. You can do the same thing with individual outputs. Double click on it down here. If you want to send a kick to output, I don't know, let's choose output five, right? Well, let's see what else is playing here. We'll just do the kick for that. And the toms, let's do the toms. Let's do toms output six. All right, let's, let's group them, output seven. I mean, output six, this one as well. Hold on, need real estate space there. Output six as well. And let's band them. Okay, let's move this guy out the way a little bit so I can see what's going on. We'll pan them now. Pan this one a little bit that way. We'll pan this one a little bit that way. Okay, cool. So now let's create another. Here I'm going to hit the plus sign because I need another output. And then we'll call these toms. Well, the first one was kick, wasn't it? Kick. Cool. And now let's do another one for the toms. Toms. Okay, cool. And let's see what happened. I'm gonna solo it. And now I can add any effect or do any EQ that I want here. Let me double click on it, bring the regular EQ. I can start EQ and use it Logic's EQ. Okay, let's use some effects here, quick effect. You can do whatever you like this point, I don't know, let's use uh, Logic's dark stuff, like a reverb, doesn't matter whichever you choose, just as for example purposes only, I don't want to put it on the kick, I'll put it on the toms, So that's pretty much how you can send separate outputs to uh, Logic Pro X on there from within here. And now what I quickly want to talk about is how to do it in your controller, because we did that on the software. We didn't worry about the controller. So let's look at the controller. I hope you guys can see it. If you can't, um, I'll just name out the rotary knobs, and you guys can do it. Um, so basically, I'm going to hit Group A on my controller, which I did over here, Group A. And then if you go up here, you'll see channel and plugin, right? We want to be in channel mode, okay? So I hit channel mode up here, the first one up here, okay? And my screen on the left change, okay? Now up here I have sound, group, and master. I'm going to go to group because the first thing we did is in this example was the group. I hit group. And then down here you'll see that the screen change, and the first one tells you the destination. And here you can select external two one or whatever we chose external two so it's an external two right now and that's basically it i move i'm going to hit group b on this one right here and i'm going to do the same thing make that one external three i'm going to hit the third one make that external four okay so that's because i'm in group 
Now, what we did also in the first group was we said, let's make the kick within the group, give them separate outputs into logic. So then in that case, you go into sound. Okay, you select the sound you want to change, which is the kick. You see here at the bottom that it says external, and then you change that external. The best way really is to use the controller. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fast. So if you get used to this, that concept, you'll be fine. As always, any questions you may have, feel free to um, write on there. Please share, because the more you share, the more I videos I can do. And if uh, it was a little bit over the top for you, which I know, this is pretty ABC. You guys rock. Um, as always, Josie Carr, check in. Check me out, prettyhybrid.club. Uh, Word, learn audio software, WordPress, and so goes. Please share one. Uh -huh.